friends welcome back to my channel I'm a little late getting started this week on my projects but better late than never uh, today I want to make a wreath for one of my doors and I'm going to use some stiffened fabric flowers on it Walmart is my most convenient craft store so a lot of my crafting needs haven't changed that much but the rest of the stuff I'm going to use today is strictly out of my stash was in the cleaning section of Walmart and I picked up this little two pack of the Great Value microfiber cleaning towels. They're 97 cents. You get two of them and that's what I'm going to try to make my flowers out of because I wanted yellow flowers. Now to make these fabric stiffened flowers you really need 100% cotton for the fabric to really stiffen up and I'm pretty sure this microfiber has some polyester in it but it may have enough cotton where it'll work. We'll see. Worst case scenario I've got some more scrap fabric I can use. Now you're going to need uh, some patterns. You're going to need a couple circle patterns. I just picked a couple bowls I had about the size flower I wanted. This is about a five inch circle and a three and a half inch circle where it'll give me a couple layers of petals. Now in order to stiffen your fabric, craft stores do sell this pre-made fabric stiffener. This is some I had in my stash that I may use today just to get rid of it. An excellent alternative is just water and glue. That will give you the same effect, half water, half glue, and make enough of the slurry to, to saturate your fabric well enough. Now the rest of the stuff is just in my stash. This was a Dollar Tree spring scarf that I didn't use. Uh, just some ribbon that I'm not sure what I'm going to use. I'm going to dig up some more buttons for the center of my flower. And this is just a wicker wreath that I had in my stash that I've just been waiting for the opportunity to use it. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and get my little fabric cut up into circles. And I'll show you what that looks like. All right, on my first towel, I just folded it in fourths, and then I placed my big circle down and just lightly traced around it. Most cotton fabric is going to be thin enough where you can cut multiple layers of fabric at the same time. Now, the main reason for the circle pattern is for size purposes, not necessarily to get a perfect circle. Because once these circles dry, they're going to be kind of wrinkledy and crunchy. You can just eyeball a circle the size that you want if need be. Now, for my smaller circle I just folded it in thirds and I'm gonna try to get as many of the smaller circles as I can. You can see they are by no means perfect circles. Now in a bowl you're gonna mix up your water glue mixture half and half and make sure your water is a little warm just so that the glue and the water will incorporate together and this is where you're going to just put all your fabric in there and make sure you have enough that you can really saturate all of your circles. Any kind of the inexpensive school glue will work. I've used Dollar Tree glue before and it works just fine. Alright, once you get all your circles completely saturated, you're going to lay out a piece of parchment paper or some paper towel or something and squeeze as much liquid as you can out of them. Just one by one until you can get all the circles you cut squeezed Stretch out. Them. You're going to unfold them and lay them out where they're not touching. You can do one of two things now. If you've got the time, you can set these out on your patio table and let them dry overnight and they will stiffen up. A quicker method, if you don't mind doing it, because they're not dripping or anything, put them in your dryer until they're dry and stiff. And that's what I plan to do since I need the quicker method today. This is going to be the true test of whether or not these microfiber will work. If these don't stiffen up, I'm going to have to go find some different fabric. All right, while my circles are in the dryer, I'm going to go ahead and wrap my wreath. Now, just so you know, this wicker wreath is a 17-inch wreath because sometimes it's hard to tell on camera. All right, I'm going to find the main seam of my Dollar Tree scarf and just cut it apart. I'm going to hot glue it on the back and just kind of wrap it as neatly as I can and then secure Cure it on the back again. That's simple enough where I don't think you need to see how to wrap the wreath. The circles pulled out of the dryer now and I normally have always done this technique with strictly cotton fabric and the overnight method but as you can see the dryer method definitely does work and the microfiber does work. Uh, the only problem I had was that this was so light that I keep starting my dryer over because it was sensing that there was nothing in there or it was already dry. With my circles being a little more flatter than I want them to be, I need to crinkle them up to give them a little bit more of a flower petal shape. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to just scrunch them up. I 
just hot glued the layers together and then hot glued a button in the center to make my flowers. But I think they're scrunched up enough where they do have a, a layered petal look. All right, I had enough circles to make four flowers, but I think three will be plenty for this wreath. Flowers. I'm gonna hot glue my three flowers on the side of my wreath, something like that. And then I'm gonna make a little bow to go right here at make the bottom. Bow. This is a roll of Dollar Tree, the green ribbon. I cut off 20, about 24 inches and I'm gonna lay it to the side. And this is actually some ribbon that I took off of a former project. Whenever I can recycle the ribbon, I certainly do as many projects as I do. Now, I've said this with many bow tutorials. It absolutely takes practice for you to be able to twist on your hands and pull it off and tie it. But the good thing is you can always pull it off and start over. All right, and I am left-handed. Technique's the same. All right, you're going to wrap it over your four fingers and come up here and put your thumb. Twist. Make a loop. The purpose of the twisting is if you did have a right and a wrong side, but the good thing is I don't necessarily have to twist, but it does help shaping your bow when you get done. Now, this is where it usually takes practice. I slip it off of my hand. I got a center loop, three loops, and three loops. This little 24 inch piece that I cut at first, I'm gonna hold it all together and tie my tails on. Now, I say this every time, too. Bows always look worse before they look better. You have to play with the ribbon and work the loops, puff it out so that it looks the way you want it to look. There's no way you could twist it up and it automatically look good. That is a simple little six-loop bow. I'm going to hot glue on my wreath. All right, friends, we're at my front door, and I took off what I had hanging and decided to put my new wreath on there because it's so bright and colorful. I love the Dollar Tree scarf on the wicker wreath form, the Dollar Tree ribbon, and the, the bright yellow flowers. I think the fabric flowers just give it a unique embellishment. If you already had your wreath form, you could make this project for $3. And I hope you like this little stash project and I inspired you in some way. So I'll be back in a few days. Bye-bye.